Hey guys, here are my 2019 predictions for AQA Biology Paper 1. Now please remember that I am not an examiner, I do not actually know what is going to be on the exam. I just read lots and lots of documents and I spend time thinking about it. Please revise absolutely everything. One of the things that I have done to help you with your revision is that over on my website I've written predicted papers base these videos around these papers and they're available for immediate download. We know that practicals are going to be 15% of your exam grade and the question last year on biology paper one was all about designing a practical which tells us straight away that just learning the methods isn't going to be enough. Just learning the practical booklet that AQA have published isn't going to be enough to get you the grades. Last year we saw carrots and eggs used for osmosis where you probably use potatoes in class. So what you need to do is to expect the unexpected and prepare for the unexpected. And that is definitely what I've tried to do in this video and in this paper. The practicals that we are left for biology paper one are gonna be things like photosynthesis. And in this paper, I've taken the method of photosynthesis that AQA give you and I've asked you to change it and I've asked you to adapt it to an unknown situation. So this will really, really get you used to um, adapting methods and facing unknown situations if they come up in the exam. The other practicals you need to know really well are always around enzymes and food testing. We know that maths is going to be 10% of the biology grade. Now it's a little bit hard to squeeze maths, biology maths in here, but what we can expect is that they are going to take the specification and they're going to apply in unknown ways. For example, the respiration equation, the photosynthesis equation. This is a lovely, obvious way that they can get maths in there. We need to be thinking about surface areas, volumes, and microscopy, things like that. Lots and lots of obvious ways that they can get maths into the paper that may not have explicitly been taught to you in class. There are some really, really common questions that come up over and over and over again. For example, labelling the structure of a cell. So we've got plant cells, we've got animal cells, and we've got bacteria cells. It is worth you knowing cells really, really well. As well as the differences between plant cells and animal cells, specialised cells and how they all work together, for example, in the structure of a leaf. There are a few topics that didn't get greatly covered last year. For example, vaccinations. Now they could ask you a maths question about this, they could give you a graph, ask you to interpret the graph, ask you to draw a graph, they could ask you about the ethics behind vaccinations, why it's really, really important, or even how it actually works. This could be lots of short answers, or this makes a brilliant six mark question. Another thing that makes a brilliant six mark question is antibiotics and this links very very closely. Another common question they love asking is about the heart, the structure of the heart and how blood flows through the heart. That is an area that is definitely worth looking at because while they touched on it last year they didn't explicitly ask it. A few things that I like for six mark questions this year are going to be movement of water. Um, this was covered last year but it wasn't covered very well so this is definitely something that's worth learning properly. So your osmosis, your diffusion, your active transport, how things move in and out of cells. As well as enzymes, so your lock and key mechanism, um, all the graphs that are associated with enzymes, all of the, the, the way the active site works, and then if we're going to go into separate, how things are made. The differences between the components in blood and the different types of blood vessels, I would say that is an important thing for you to revise, and then different diseases. Now please remember these are just predictions, you should use all of the resources out there for you, not just the predictive papers that I wrote on my website, but last year's papers that came up, the specimen papers, all the workbooks you should get your hands on, all the revision guides you can make notes from, my videos which you can make notes from. Please do as much revision as you can. Now combined science people, goodbye, good luck, separate science people add a few extra little bits for you. There is not a lot of extra separate science stuff in biology paper one. It is all chucked in biology paper two. So what you can expect is them to ask more in 
depth questions about the the stuff that comes up in both combined and separate science and then potentially to focus on those few areas that really do only come up with separate science in biology paper one so we're talking about the extra practicals we're talking about monoclonal antibodies we're talking about the microbiology practical the antibiotic resistance this could be an extra bit to a question in um the combined paper so good luck guys um i'm gonna be here with you every single step of the way ouch this is why in some videos i have unexplained scratches <laughs>